Well, good morning. It's Tuesday. Excuse me, I want to get adjusted here. It's Tuesday, uh, January 24th, and I wanted to comment on your Module 1 work. I was pleased to meet all of you and get to know you a little bit uh, through your work. It's uh, a, a good start to our, uh, to our time together. The topic, of course, for Module 1 was risk management and the concept of preventive law. Uh, our big picture, of course, is that a law-abiding enterprise is a competitive enterprise. And that's, uh, that's something that we always want to keep in mind. Um, we talk about liability in, in negative terms, as it, as it is, because as many of you pointed out, uh, big liability can be a big financial hit to your sport enterprise and perhaps even a financial wipeout that would end your business. And that's, of course, an immediate and very real world concern. But to bring in some of our ethical concerns, uh, running a safe, liability-free enterprise is the right thing to do. And so we want to uh, focus on that. Um, fear liability, but operate your business in a safe manner because it is the right thing to do. We don't want to injure people, and the law says that if we do injure people, we're going to have to pay for it. Uh, some of the topics that you brought up in connection with uh, uh, risk management uh, included fan safety, job security. Some of you mentioned a beer garden and a fitness center and beer gardens elsewhere. Uh, many of you have different experiences with uh, uh, situations that can that can produce liability that need to be managed, uh, including uh, what several of you mentioned, trips with teams, particularly high school teams, where you have to be concerned about keeping uh, young people uh, engaged so they don't uh, misbehave. And that, of course, falls onto you as the, uh, as the manager. Uh, a big topic these days, and of course, um, uh, that you mentioned is concussion. Concussion liability is uh, something that's going to be out there. It's going to be out there big time. It's a phenomenon that will literally last a lifetime. And uh, that means that its liability can have, as we lawyers say, it can have a long tail. And so we want to manage and pay attention to that currently developing concept of concussion, a concussion protocol, and the advancement in the science of, uh, of concussion treatment. So when you get information about concussion uh, knowledge, pay attention to it because, like I say, it's a long tail and uh, it can reach back and get you um, years, years down the road. Um, one other topic that came up frequently in uh, your discussions was the, uh, the signing of a waiver or a release. Uh, remember that parents cannot waive a minor child's uh, claims. They can waive their own claims, but they can't waive their children's claims. And so, uh, for what that's worth. Um, in my experience with waivers, uh, and we'll repeat this later on when we get to this topic specifically, their primary value in my experience has been their educational value. That is, when you ask someone to sign a waiver uh, and they read it, uh, and you've sufficiently explained the risks that they are about to engage in, they understand it, and perhaps they'll be a little bit more careful, and nothing will come of the, uh, of the event. All well and good, that's what we want. But as far as a waiver doing what it's literally intended to do, that is, exculpate your sport enterprise from liability, uh, you walk away from liability because they gave up their right to sue, that doesn't work very often. I've, I've I've seen that work very, very rarely, uh, and it has to have specific facts that, su that support that. So waivers are useful, and in my experience, their primary use is to educate people about what they're getting into so they will be more careful. As a side benefit, you might get off the hook should something bad uh, happen. Um, some hot topics that I wanted to mention to you uh, that are, are currently uh, uh, bubbling out there. I mentioned uh, concussion. Uh, concussion. Uh, there's a class action filed against the NCAA regarding its concussion protocol. Uh, that class action is about to be settled. Uh, it will provide for medical monitoring and some uh, changes in the protocols. So that's something to watch. That's a very, very hot topic. Another hot topic, which uh, you will be watching and very, be very much a part of if you are in the collegiate uh, higher ed uh, area. Um, 
for student athletes as employees. Pay for play. A huge topic these days. And remember, uh, two, three, four sides to that coin. If, uh, if students are paid to play football, basketball, lacrosse, whatever the sport might be, how are they paid? Do minimum wage laws apply? Overtime laws? Uh, industrial insurance? Workers' comp? Uh, medical insurance. All of those things are part of, uh, of the equation. They will represent a cost to your enterprise, and uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how the, all that plays out. Uh, we'll be talking about the O'Bannon case uh, soon enough, and uh, the O'Bannon case kicked down the door to this concept of liability on the part of the uh, NCAA. Uh, the next case, which is in San Francisco in federal court, uh, that will specifically address the issue of compensation or pay. So it's a very, very hot topic. Another hot topic which uh, uh, I want you to pay attention to, Title IX, sexual assault. Unfortunately, like it or not, sexual assault and athletic departments uh, are inextricably interconnected. Uh, it's just a, a, a fact of life. The classic worst-case scenario, uh, the uh, college or university, protecting its star athlete from sexual assault misbehavior, from responsibility for that. That's the worst case scenario. Uh, it has happened. It does happen. It continues to happen more often than you'd like, certainly more often than you'd like to know. Uh, so that will be a very important uh, uh, subject of, uh, of discussion in the, next, uh, in the next several years. The change of the administration from the Obama administration to the Trump administration may bring some changes there in the way enforcement takes place takes place at the federal level. However, uh, as a practical matter, I think many of the uh, structures have been put into place. Uh, people have been hired. Title IX people have been hired. Policies have been made. Budgets have been set. Much has been baked into the cake such that uh, radical change, I'm, I'm, I'm not certain that radical change will occur uh, on the ground at your place uh, in your sport enterprise, nonetheless, an important uh, an important thing to uh, to pay attention to, because it's the right thing to do, and because it can bring liability uh, to your enterprise. Um, one uh, uh, oh one practical note: in reading your writing, um, some of you need to get back to basics. As professionals, you will frequently communicate in the written word and attention to spelling, grammar, punctuation, those basic things make you look smarter, or at least baseline smart enough to be doing what you're doing. If you don't pay attention to that stuff, you look not smart, and that's not where you want to be. So pay attention in your writing to spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Uh, as to our future uh, work in Module 2 and the uh, remaining modules, the tasks will be a little bit different. Instead of me assigning a question as we did in the first uh, in the first uh, outing, uh, you will get to choose uh, a discussion uh, question and a learning activity of your choice. Uh, you'll pick one of each from all of the choices that you have in all of the chapters. For example, if we have a four chapter module, in those at the end of each of those four chapters. Uh, there will be a, a discussion question and a learning activity. Just pick one of them from a chapter a topic that interests you. And if you each do that, we'll get a pretty broad spectrum of things to talk about from our, our subject areas. So that will do it for now. Uh, good work on your, your first outing, and I look forward to uh, talking to you again. Have a great day.